My name is Dinesh Natarajan Mohan and I publish templates on Inzara.com. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Recruitment Dashboard Power BI template and how you can use this to enter your recruitment data and get instant automated effective recruitment based reports, which will help you make smart data driven decisions to improve ROI in your recruitment process. So before we start, I want to share with you how this whole setup works. We enter the data in Microsoft Excel file, and then we visualize the output reports in Power BI. And you will receive both files when you purchase the template. You will receive an Excel file and a Power BI file. So you enter the data in the Excel file. We do a one-time connection from Power BI to Excel. And then from then on, anytime when you in update the data in Excel, all you have to do is to open Power BI and hit the refresh button. And now your reports will instantly get refreshed. So this is really simple. So now let's go and take a look at the Excel file first to see what data needs to be input. So now I have the Excel file open and we only have a few sheets in this. So it's really simple. So in the settings sheet, you can customize, for example, where do you source your applications or candidates from? You can customize this list. You can also change um, the location or offices, location of the offices for your company. You can change the departments, job type, job category, job level, and also the job titles that you will be recruiting for and then you have a bunch of attributes such as what are the different stages that the candidates will go through during their hiring process or the recruitment process and then you have the list of decline reasons so why um, you may decline a candidate why that candidate may decline an offer um, so you can enter the customized list of decline reasons you can also enter the list of recruiter names and then you have the leave based attributes such as if there are certain days that are considered as leave or holiday, sorry, weekends in your company, you will enter them there. And then if you have any holidays in your company, you will enter them there. So this is all you do as a one time setup of settings. And then you go into the job sheet. This is where you enter all the jobs that you are hiring for and you can continue to enter new jobs if new requisitions are opened and each job will have a job title a job number which is required a job title job location department and all the categorization of the job and then you also have a job posted date and the job status can be either it's still open, which means you're still hiring, or it's completed, which means you have hired a person for that job. And also the other option is canceled if you're no longer interested in hiring for that job. And this is all you enter for each job. And then you go to the applications where you can enter all the candidates or applications that you're receiving for the jobs. And as you can see here, the job number, the name of the candidate. Uh, let me zoom in a little. So you have the candidate name, where you source that candidate from, um, and other attributes like gender, age, and ethnicity, because these can be useful later for a reporting perspective. And then as each candidate goes through each of the recruitment stage, you will be entering the dates when they complete that stage. And then finally, in the status column, if the candidate is hired, you will choose hired. Otherwise, you will choose not hired. So it's really simple, um, only two possibilities. And then if you leave it blank, that means you are still in the process of evaluating that candidate. And then once, um, if there is a, a decision made and then you decide not to hire, then choose the reason for not hiring. And then any cost involved in um, in recruiting or um, that application or the candidate, you can enter the cost. And then if a candidate is hired, enter the hire date, and then also the date when the employee will join your company. All these are very, very helpful to get good sound reporting to evaluate your recruitment process. 
Okay, and then you can enter comments about any uh, candidates and so on. That's it. So now let's go into Power BI to take a look at the output reports. And that is what I have opened here. And um, you can see all the reports um, listed on the left side here. So we have the five different reports and this is the home page. And you can see uh, some key metrics displayed here for you. And you can also change this to say, okay, do I wanna look at it for the last 12 months? Or what about my metrics for the last 18 months? So when I do that, you can see that the numbers are changing. Um, and that is primarily um, the way you can uh, interact with this report and make it as dynamic and customized as you need according to your company's needs. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about each of the five reports. So I'm going to go into the hiring efficiency report. And um, as the name indicates, this report shows you metrics which help you identify how efficient you are hiring. For example, um, we have hired 26 positions in the last one year and uh, the total amount of money that we have spent on this is this and for each person hired how much have we in invested or how much have we um, cost and then how long did it take to fill those open positions on average and on average how long did it take for us to hire the position so um, when we talk about hiring like when you finish hiring that is the hiring process ends but then only when the person joins the company the position is filled so that's the difference between days to hire and days to fill and you can also see these metrics shown month by month um, so all these metrics that we talked about you can see the monthly trends and then on the right side here you can see which of the sources whether it's LinkedIn or Indeed or whatever the source may be which one um, contributes most to uh, people hired in your company. And also, what about what about the cost side of things? So which source is more efficient, uh, which is the, where it brings the cost per hire is lower, and if the quality of the candidate is good, then that is the right source where you need to invest more money into. Um, and then on the bottom, you have the how long does it take to fill a position? And you can see each of the stages, which one takes the longest time. So I can say, for example, totally it takes 53 days to fill a position. And you can see that 14 of those days is the time taken after you hire somebody. How long do they take to um, how long do they take to join the team? And that's what takes 14 days. Again, this is not abnormal, but this visibility to this information instantly as you have new jobs being filled you will now have instant access to how this metrics uh, are and based on this you can take decisions to identify any bottlenecks in your recruitment process and tweak it so that ultimately you need to get the right candidates as quickly as possible filling your open positions at the right cost and that's what you should be able to that's what you'll be able to take decisions on having access to all this information at your fingertips you can filter this dashboard by um you know if i want to only look at full-time employees or if i want to look at only the finance team uh, or accounting and i can now in this case we didn't hire anybody in accounting um it looks like let's try IT, so we hired seven people in IT. So you can customize this or narrow down um, this by looking at one department, one type of job, or one specific hiring source and so on. Um, you can also change the duration of your report by looking at one year or six months or whatever it may be. Now let's go back to the home page and let's go on to the hiring effectiveness report this report shows how many applications came through and then what percentage of the applications did we actually provide an offer so we selected them and we offered them the job uh, what percentage accepted the offer and overall conversion percentage is 4.7 here and this one for example you can look at it uh, all these metrics month by month so you'll always have the view into trending of these metrics to um, see which direction um, these metrics are uh, leaning towards so that you can course correct or continue to keep doing the same so if it's going in the right direction. 
Now, the recruitment funnel, uh, we have seen it before uh, in other templates that we have published. It shows you uh, which step, uh, where do people drop off, where do candidates drop off in your recruitment stages. So you can identify, is it the technical interview where uh, people are dropping off or is it more the, um, you know, um, hiring manager interview where this is. So we can identify what do we need to do to differently source the candidates or filter them earlier in the process so that our recruitment funnel is as effective as it can be. Um, and then you can also see here for each of the source, you know, what is the conversion percentage of uh, applications coming through LinkedIn versus your website and all that um, to take a call about which sources do you want to spend more money into. Um, and then you can also see why the applications, you're declining the applications, um, why your some of the candidates are declining your offers and you can take decisions based on them as well. Now let's go back to the home page and look at the analysis tab. So this report uh, is a dynamic way for you to analyze all these metrics across certain dimensions. So for example, I've chosen recruiter name and I can see the recruit for each recruiter, I have all these metrics that we have looked at. So the cost of hiring, cost per hire, average days to hire, uh, conversion percentage, all of that. So now I can see how the different recruiters are performing. So and I can identify the best performing recruiters and I can learn from them how they are able to perform that well. So we can replicate that with other recruiters, for example. Um, and the same thing can be done by department. So I can click on department and now I can see for example, marketing, they've hired five positions and their cost per hire is 495, whereas IT, the cost per hire is a lot higher. Again, I'm not saying always you can just look at these numbers of cost per hire and say, hey, this is um, the way to go because each department has different kinds of positions. So not all the positions are the same. So you always have to apply the context uh, which uh, before you take the final call, but having this data readily available to you helps you um, make that decision uh, in a confident way because you, can, you are using data to drive your decisions. So this is a dynamic report where I can click on any of these options and I can look at the metrics along that specific dimension. Okay, let's go back home page and now I'll take a look at the open positions report. This, as the name indicates, how many positions are currently open uh, by job title, by department. I can say which um, department has a lot of open positions. I also have the exact list of um, uh, open jobs and then how many applications we have received for those jobs and so on. So again, this is helpful for um, just having access to what is currently open and how many applications are coming through for them. Do we Are we getting enough applications? What do we need to, to prioritize and get these open positions filled as soon as possible? And final report we have is a job report. And here you can select a specific job from the dropdown. Each job will have a number. So you put in your job number and you can see whether the job has been um, uh, filled or not. And then you can also see all the candidates who applied for that job, what decision was made, did we not hire them, and then one person we hired. And um, you can see, for example, um, the funnel for that one job. And this report is also helpful if you're looking at an open job, uh, you want to know which um, candidates are currently still in which stage, you can easily use this report. So this report has two purposes. One is to look at the completed jobs, but more importantly, you can look at open jobs um, to look at the list of candidates who applied, what stage they are, have we entered any comments in Excel that will also come through here, and I can look at, okay, how many are in hiring manager um, interview? For example, if I click on hiring manager interview, I can look at which candidates are currently at this stage. Um, if somebody is in tech, I can look at which candidates are currently in the tech interview stage. So really, really, the purpose of this is to get quick access to the information that you're looking for. And uh, let me go back to the home. So that covers all the reports that we have in our recruitment dashboard Power BI template. I'm gonna open the same Power BI report in 
desktop power bi power bi desktop okay so now i have the same power bi file in uh, my power bi desktop and you can see that i have a lot of options the menus on the top and the right uh, because now i can create my own reports i can modify this uh, again, if you're not familiar with Power BI, then I would recommend not to mess with it. Uh, but you can always make a copy of the file and just learn how to modify. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, support at inzara.com is our email, so you can reach out to us for any help. Um, on the right side, you have this complete list of metrics. So all these metrics are so hired positions, cost, all of this is readily available for you. Uh, if I want to, for example, instead of open jobs, I want to show some other metric, uh, like how many offers did we give, let's say. I can now see offers given as a metric on here, and I can click on it, drag over here, and now I have changed the offers given. This is how easy it is for me to change um, a specific um, metric on the report or a specific tile on the report. If I want to get back my open jobs, I will do that. That is it. So you have access to all these metrics and you can create more reports in your Power BI file if you're familiar with Power BI. And um, we have step-by-step -step guides on how to use the template on our support portal. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us at support at nzara.com. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I will provide a link to where you can download this template from inzara.com in the description below. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video.